Frosty or Stephen of the family Aspinall from Burnley, Lancashire, England, obviously. <laughs> that, that's the landmass, <laughs> not the corporation. My background is since 1996, I've made my living by growing the hemp plant, which is not harming anybody, and we're all entitled to free trade, levy exchange, yeah? Now, the reason I got into this is because I got told that it was lawful, which I'd always ever felt it were lawful. And so that's how I made my living since 1996. Plasters have outlawed, wrongly outlawed. I went to see a mate of mine, Gold Map. Uh, I've met the guy on a plumbing course when I was training to be a plumber. Yeah. Now, the guy who was kind enough, he was a Korg engineer, uh, plumber, yeah, and gas fitter, and it, we, he, he gives a lift as we do in his apprentice, and he taught us a lot, yeah, so I know this guy, we're an educated man, you know, a few years older than myself. Anyway, when I went to see Matt with a with, with, with young lad who did the training with, he turned around and told me that I could grow lo weed lawfully, yeah, and told me about this Magna Carta, and obviously my first response was... <laughs> No way, kiss it, you know what I mean? Anyway, when I, I've left, I only had half an hour, I've gone. Um, and I couldn't sleep at night, because I kept thinking, right, this Peter, I know, is an intelligent man. Yeah, if it had been a crackhead or someone who'd have turned around and said it, I wouldn't have believed him, yeah? So after two weeks, I come back into area, went to see Matthew, he got, he rung Pete, I went down to see Pete, he ended up, brilliant man, downloaded a load of files for me. Yeah, give me a lot of information to watch, which a lot with Rob Menard, hero. Yeah, and I watched me learning his stuff, understanding the legal fiction. And of course, <laughs> every, every time I was reading and finding out more, I was getting more and more mad because of the way they'd been treating me over the years and classing me as an outlaw when it's actually them who's the outlaws and the villains. Yeah, the more you read and understand what's actually going on. Yeah, so then I started reading it. Yeah, and started understanding it more and more, yeah, until, and this is what you've got, you know, anyone who is interested in going into this, you must really get and understand the, f the, the basic thing, and that is your legal fiction and the difference between yourself being a man and not being the fictional name, yeah? And I think that's very important, you know, because that's the key to everything, isn't it? Once you've got that understanding, you can progress to another level. Now, I just thought, right, I can learn a bit, step out of society and get on with doing what I've been doing, but at least it'd be lawful. But of course, then you have to test things. Yeah, so paperwork were done, I did the, I wrote to the Queen, the two affidavits, I claim me, me, me uh, claim a right, yeah, which is basically making your own law, yeah, and having a contract between yourself and the private corporation known as United Kingdom, yeah. And then I also served the private contract to the uh, Prime Minister, which was Gordon Brown at the time, yeah, stating that I was withdrawing all consent to legislation and rules, and in fact that I was not a legal fiction. I was a living man with a big soul, yeah, because you've got to look, the word person is a very interesting word, yeah, because it basically means the human body with no soul, yeah. And it also means corporation as well, which is why you can never actually own anything as a person. So whatever you think you own, you don't really own. The United Kingdom is a company. It might as well be Tesco's, Asda. That private company yeah, has a contract to the name, which is the legal fiction. Now, if you claim to be the name, the legal fiction, you're contracted under all legislated rule. It's like working for a company. When I wrote to the Prime Minister, another affidavit, explaining that we'd revoked all my consent legislated rule, yeah, which brought me into this common law rule, at this, yeah, then I'm not working for the corporation, the United Kingdom. I actually live in a landmass known as England and has been known as England for a long time, or Britain. I don't live in the United Kingdom. Well, the claim of right basically is. We all stand under common law. Now, the, the basic common law is, is quite simple, really, and if everyone could abide by the common law, then there'd be no reason for having any other law, yeah? Now, the four concepts of the common law, to my understanding, are you, you don't injure or wound in any way, shape or form, being mental, physical. 
Yeah, you don't vandalise property. You don't defraud on a contract, well, rip anybody off, yeah, and you don't thieve. And apart from them, yeah, there's no other laws you have to stand under unless they're legislated rule. Now, what I've done is, when you put a claim of right, I have claimed the right for free trade, exchange and barter. It's your, your, your right in your own law, yeah, and you, you're putting it down, and as you send it as an affidavit, and they, they note it down and put it on the record, and that is your private contract. So anything you put in your, your private contract is your personal law, and it stands for yourself, the man, between the man and the corporation. I'd suggest to anybody, you've got to look at Rob Menard's work and read it and understand it, which it goes through and it explains your fee schedule. That is basically, if, if they want to come and talk to you or they want you to respond to, to letters, they charge you for a, per letter, a letter, so you tell them what you're going to charge them for a letter. If they want you in court, you give them your price. I think I'm 500 quid an hour. In fact, it might be going up to you, I'm getting better at this law stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll be putting that on one of my claims, <laughs> yeah. But what, and your claim of right is, obviously, if they assault me in any way, shape or form, if they use any kind of spray against me or electronical device against me, my man and my body, yeah, I, I, I've given them, I think I've insured it for a million quid. You can guard yourself about what, so you against what they're creating. Do. Your own fee schedule. So if you want to take you to jail, I think I'm £5,000 an hour, yeah, for if they're unlawfully detaining you, yeah? or kidnapping you, yeah? yeah, but if you put your fee schedule in, and then when you're going through your process of your courts, yeah, you can add the fee schedule on your, you know, and close a copy, and, and work to your fee schedule, so if actually when you win your case, because you have to, if they follow their own due process, yeah, then you get paid out on your fee schedule, just like the lawyer would get paid. What you're actually doing, when you're creating your private documents to either you claim a right, yeah, or to the Prime Minister, or if you had a problem with somebody, any, any man or woman for anything, or what you do is you send, serve them a, a, an affidavit, a commercial affidavit, right, and all you're doing is you're suing them in the private, not going through the public sector, because that's why you never win anything, because they're all in the same boat. This is why no police has ever been done for any of the killings that's been done in custody because their own people are searching, yeah, but you can do it in the private and this is what you're actually doing with your commercial liens, yeah. Now, if you serve someone a letter, yeah, the honourable time is 21 days, what, that's what they do in their law, so whatever point you've got, say, for example, you've been pulled over on car, in car, you've been unlawfully detained. So what you do, you, you write an affidavit, which is basically a statement of the truth, which is your truth, right? So what you do is write exactly what's happened, as though you were writing it in your diary, but it's got to be worth, you know, as much information, the better, point to point. So I was, I was pulled over unlawfully by so-and-so, so-and-so. They asked me to produce this, as I said, whatever, but you have to go in word for, for word. Like when you, if you've ever been done and you're writing a statement, it's just your statement, but it's your truth. Yeah, so then you was unlawfully assaulted when they put the handcuffs on you. Yeah, you was off, then unlawfully put into a police vehicle and transported to whatever station. You were unlawfully detained there. Point to point, you put your, your in your words. Then what you do is you serve that to whoever's done it, and you give them the 21 days for it to come back and challenge any point on there, which they can't because it's your truth. So then what happens, after the 21 days, you send them what's known as a notice of default, which is confirmation, because they haven't challenged it by an old law, an old, a law of acquiescence, by estoppel, that is a lawful document. But the first document is only lawful once you serve the notice of default. There's no point sending the first document because without the second, it's not worth nothing. Now, I must say now, and this is something that we've only just found out, right? Complaint. What you're doing is that's your complaint, but a proper complaint is, is known as a bill of exchange. So on the first document, you'd put a commercial link, notice of distress, because they've caused you the, the distress, yeah? Bill of exchange, 
Right? And on a bill exchange, you've got to have the drawee and the drawer, the date. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to provide them with a remedy. Now, a remedy for, would be for whatever situation you'd put, right, if you, if you wanted, your fee schedule was five grand, you were in there for, for example, myself, I think I did 13 and a half hours, so mine will have 13 and a half hours times five grand, plus five grand or something for each or so, and taking your prints, etc. So they'll be get, but you've got to provide the remedy on it, yeah, because if you create a complaint, you've got to provide the remedy. So the bill of exchange needs the remedy, the drawee, drawer and the date. So I've put a complaint in as an affidavit. So this is what I've been trying to get him to accept. Yeah, because that's my facts of what happened in day there, as my truth. And that's what I want to plead guilty to. They unlawfully sold to me by ankle for me, eh? and they tell me the 13 and a half hours, etc, etc. They're the only facts I'm going to plead to, and that is the truth. Yet they will not accept them. Because on their facts, what they want me to accept, they have this thing about a charge under such and such legislation. Well, that's not to do with me. I'm not in the law society. I'm a freeman. Yeah? And, you know, so they, they've got nothing to do with me. My facts, my truth, yeah. All day, every day. I haven't earned any harm. I haven't brought no law, sir. So what am I doing studying? Uh, well, you always send anything and this is what, for, what we've actually been doing. Recorded delivery, or recorded delivery or registered post, depends how important the document is, but what we've actually been doing is we've been getting, you can get a roll of them off the off post office, but what we do is we actually photocopy the, the sticker where they have to sign and we put one on every page of the document we send. So if it's only on the envelope, they only accept in the envelope. If, it's, if you've got the, the signed thing on each one, you have to sign for every document. Get your registration and keep it, yeah? Because that's your proof for when you go to court. The notary public, well, basically, that's the seal of the Vatican. That's what it, it is, yeah? That is a, that's what makes your document lawful because that, they work in the private. It stems back from the church. They've got the power of the church, which is a law upon its own, you know? I had done any. Well, I was lucky enough, about seven of us managed to get over the notary, I think it might have been May, April, May. Now, since then, when we tried to go back and get some more off him, he'd been off hill, and he's not been back since. Since then, every notary we've tried to get hold of has refused to do it. We've actually been sat in front of one, because we went to, I went to get a, a lean witness I wanted him to witness something for a lean hour we're doing. Anyway, we've gone down, yeah, we've tried every which way we can, why don't you do it in the public sector, because it's a private thing, we want justice, yeah. Uh, it tried to tell me the instrument I'd created, which I've just told you, which was the, what we just explained not long ago, right. We actually ended up reading, word for word, the oath he took out to him before, to get the job, which actually states that they are to, pro to provide the service to any man or woman and for any tool or instrument. And what's in the instrument is actually nothing to do with them. Right? But the bloke still refused. Yeah? And we've been refused off notaries all over the country. Yeah? And we had someone went to six notaries. In one day, I've been telling him that he was new into it. Where I've been telling him, you won't get one, you won't get one. He went to six in a day. In Andy Runk at one at some head of a notary who said 800 of them had had a meeting that day or the day before and they were going to refuse to do any more of these affidavits, etc. Which realistically they should be kicked out of the job then because the, their oath is to do it for any man or woman for any instrument. There is an old law, and which is what we, when I, we were cross examining the notary, we actually brought it up as if anything had been amended from the first bill of rights so, or. And he said, stated, no, so what you can do is you can have three good men instead of a notary, which is, was put, is three good men. So any man can witness, it's only the proof of you're the man signing that document. It's, yeah, and it's your truth, yeah? And you're obviously doing it under oath because it's to do, yeah? 
So that's you testifying. The word testify means to put your balls on the line, testicles. Yeah, that's where it originates from. That's why women weren't allowed in courts originally.